Hey folks, this is Ben Yussel. How's it going? Um, I had a dream last night that I want to briefly go over. Um, at least one subject, one with regard to one subject. Um, so there's a dream, and then there's what um, the dream might imply. Well, at least what, for one one aspect of this dream. So um, I had a dream about living at a renting a room in a house where there's a lot of different roommates. Um, this is a while back, um, and it, it's always interesting, and there's a lot of things I can mention about this dream, um, but with, uh, regard to having a living arrangement like that, where there's several different roommates in one house, there's always a question of, um, being considerate to other people regarding fridge space, yeah, that sort of thing, and, um, what they have that they're willing to share, not just food-wise, but, if they have like a big screen TV or if they have like a video game system, all that stuff. I, I, I definitely, this is something I'm very familiar with. And um, by the way, one of the roommates I had had a big screen TV that we all used. And then when he moved, he took it with him. So we were left with a much smaller TV. And that was, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. Oh. Uh, I can mention more about that if you guys are curious. But no, I, I wanted to talk about uh, diet and character because this dream touched on food a little bit and it got me thinking about all the roommates I've had, you know, in college, a church mission after and during college, after college, and what their personality and characters are like uh, compared to what their diets are like. And I have a few general thoughts. They're, they're general. And I don't want you guys to make too much of a connection, too strong of a connection regarding different kinds of foods and character or personality because a lot of times people will want to do that, make these very concrete, strong connections. And they're not really concrete, strong connections, but there are tendencies, right? There are tendencies. We talk about uh, cultural tendencies, or if you're of certain nationalities, there might be certain tendencies for you to act in certain ways at times. But that's even more nebulous somewhat than what I'm talking about with the tendencies between diet and your character and personality. So what I've noticed in this aspect over time, and this is what I was you know, think about this morning a little bit, um, I noticed that um, I noticed that most of my roommates definitely consume more dairy and uh, refined grains like breads and stuff more than I do. I got away from that stuff in my 20s. And by this point, I think it's paid off. Um, all the folks that have eaten more dairy and refined grains have had either more trouble with their weight or they have a little bit of gut and they, it's not, you know, some of them exercise, but it's like because they've eaten so much of those two kinds of foods, refined grains and dairy, or more than I did, it's been harder for them to keep extra weight off. In my case, of course, I've, I've just, I have a sweet, you know, it's about the sugar, but as long as I keep the sugar to a, in general, to a lower extent, I'll, and I exercise, I'll be fine. But, um, so there's not really a whole lot of connection between if you're really, really into dairy food or into grains and your personality or character, there's, that's not really, there's not really a strong connection there. Not really. The bigger connection has to do, and let me go through the different animal foods here for a second. Eggs are fine. Anybody who eats eggs or fish, it's good. It's a good thing for their personality and their character in general um, as long as you don't overdo especially the eggs but they're both great uh, they both really are solid I, th I recommend you guys unless you're vegan strict hardcore just plant food eating vegan definitely get some eggs and fish in your diet both those kinds of foods are great for you and they're, they're great for your personality great for your mood great for spirituality all that stuff um Especially fish, but I think both of them are great. Both of them really are great. Um, poultry eaters, and that's all 
everybody as well. I, I haven't seen as much of a connection with getting poultry and character personality. Um, again, it's a question of how much someone eats of it. But it, it just the, if you eat too much poultry, it, it tends to make you a teensy bit surly and sluggish. You want to, uh, you won't always want to be out and about. Um, you want to always be like really super quick in your movements, especially the older you get. Um, but you know, it's not a bad way to go as long as you don't have too much of it and you want to get higher. Nobody, hardly anybody gets the higher quality stuff. So again, it will make them not quite as agile as if they had the organic or pasture raised. Yeah, you know, I can't, I can't find pasture raised poultry. Uh, it's just hard to find. So I just go with organic you know, dark stuff. So as you guys know, I'm getting to the red meat here and you guys probably know what I'm going to say. When I've noticed when I've, I've had a few roommates, well, I've had some, there's been a smaller number of the roommates or missionary companions or whoever, you know, on my, on my church mission, the number of people I've known that are guys, and I'm speaking more about guys here, but some of this, of course, crossover with women, to some extent, the number of guys I've known that have, and have been roommates with that have eaten a lot of red meat, uh, you know, a considerable, a considerable amount, much more than I eat, or definitely more than I eat. Of those folks I've known, it definitely has a more noticeable impact on their personality and character. Without going too much into it, red meat makes someone, especially if they're guys, I'm talking about especially guys, but I imagine this might apply to women as well. If they're guys, it makes someone, I think, a little bit angrier, more surly. Uh, it helps with libido. I mean, it makes you, I don't want to be off color here, but it makes you more sexually energized, yes, but but um, it also helps with your muscle growth, right? Weightlifting. And it helps you have more power, I suppose, muscular power. But again, it, you know, it's a testosterone thing somewhat, but it makes you, it affects your hormones more. You can boost testosterone, but it makes you more surly and it makes you more angry and intense. And, uh, yeah. And so most of the weightlifters I've known, most of the guys that are really into that stuff, they balance the red meat with other kinds of either animal or plant proteins. So they don't overdo that too much. But the kinds of people I, and again, red meat can shorten life. This is, without going too much into this, because I want to talk about other foods as well. But red, red, heavy red meat eaters, burgers every day, steaks every day. Um, yeah, I mean, like, it definitely makes people angrier. Um, imagine the person who's always, you know, their, their job it's a nine to five job, and maybe it's very physically exhausting, and they're eating burgers all the time, or they're eating steaks all the time, or meaty sandwiches, and they're, you know, living in a place where there's really bad traffic. And there's a fair number of guys like this. It will trigger road rage. It can very much, yeah. I mean, this it's no, there's no mistaking what all that red meat can do. And it can do good things, but it can also do not good things. Um, it's a hot-blooded kind of food, more than almost anything else. But I can think of it, it might be the number one make you more intense food. It might be, in a way. But not again, not, not always in a very positive way. So red meat has some negative connotations. So it, that's why it's not, important not to overdo it. And there are some guys that just are like, they. I have a cousin who, that's what he eats. And there's another roommate, former roommate I have, that that's basically what he ate. One one case, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to get into it, but I know it affects your character. I can. So, yeah, in subtle ways, it depends on the person. So going on to some other kinds of foods here, um, it comes to things like rice and quinoa and, and beans and nuts and seeds, uh, all the protein heavier uh plant foods i'm not talking about produce yet but all the yeah all that stuff that, and also the stuff that's not as glutinous because glutinous foods depends on the person but if you're like me if someone's like me and they have asperger syndrome 
either mildly or, you know, especially autism, that sort of, well, it's going to make you uh, silly and do, so that there's a, there's a thing to add. That, so it can make you kind of just gassy and silly and weird and stuff. But, but if you're talking about he- healthier plant proteins, it has a positive effect on someone's life. It gives you energy without the side effects and the weighing down the greasiness and all that stuff of animal foods, which we could use some of that, a little bit of that for brains and muscles and things and whatever, hormones and stuff. We need fat for hormones. But, you know, all those those, those healthier plant foods that are, I'm not talking about produce yet, but have more protein and carbs, they are into fats. They, they I'm also including avocado here. Um, it's, it's all the, it's all the heavier carb foods that are like, but not, not the breads and things. And you know, oatmeal is good too, but it's all, you see again, rice, quinoa, amaranth, millet, um, all the beans and peanuts and nuts and seeds. They're all foods that have a positive impact on your character and personality, uh, I, in my estimation. They're they're great for you. Um, now let's get to produce. Without a doubt, every vegetable, and I do mean every vegetable, and practically speaking, most every yeah every fruit, but the sugarier fruits within some degree of moderation. But all the produce have amazing, an amazing, amazingly good impact on people. Their regarding their personality and their character, you know, across the board, it always has a positive effect on people. Always, especially mood, but especially also spirituality and character. All this stuff, every single plant, every single vegetable, every single uh, fruit. But again, the sugarier ones can make you a little chubby if you're not careful. Sure, um, but there are people talk about mushrooms and. Yeah, meditation and that's I'm not talking about the psychedelic stuff you know but and you can get into every I, I think it's very interesting to get into every plant food and see what, what how it really benefits you but they all have one thing is all have beneficial aspects um, some some extraordinarily so um, imagine the way someone say someone's just kind of a little thing a little bit not so great when they get up or where they had a bad dream and they have a nice breakfast of a whole orange, right? A regular orange, and a banana, um, maybe uh, just a few eggs, and some water, right? Water instead of orange juice, maybe. Orange juice, is, well, you know, whatever. But, um, and then, yeah, that's their breakfast. Maybe you want to put oatmeal in there, whatever. Um, all the, the, that orange, that banana, uh, the the oatmeal, the eggs will provide the strength and the protein and the, the hormonal things. And But all those plant foods will boost someone's mood, definitely. Oranges always boost your mood, for instance. But you can talk about other kinds of foods. What if you have uh, like an egg omelet, but you skip the cheese, no cheese? I don't know if I say. Yeah, if you, even if you put cheese in there, which can kind of be a little bit heavier food, um, if you put onion and spinach in there, it's going to boost your... Um, it's going to flush out toxins. It's going to... Uh, keep you slimmer. It's gonna uh, the spinach. Both of them have interesting. I don't know. We don't always know all the effects, but the onions are more of a detox thing. The spinach will uh, help you be healthier, younger, extend your lifespan. Um, maybe they won't have as noticeably powerful effect on your mood as oranges because of their taste. But the nutrients, the minerals in especially the spinach, but also the onion will definitely boost your mood in the long term. It'll boost everything. All just all your neurons will be firing. And it will work with the egg, which has the omega-3 fatty acids and other minerals as well, like iodine and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, we talked about most of the type, different types of foods already. Herbs and spices are the same, the same deal as, same deal as uh, produce. They have the same positive effects. They just vary a bit from <clears throat> spice to spice and herb to herb, but they all have very positive effects. Very positive effects. Water, <clears throat> water, <clears throat> sorry, water is 
um, kind of like something that just makes it all work. It doesn't provide any energy, so to speak, in a way, but it's it does another way. It, it just facilitates a lot of things. So it, it's kind of the glue, in a way, for a lot of things. I don't, I don't know why I use the word glue, but... <laughs> um, so let's talk about all the people that I've known that eat a lot of junk food. <clears throat> what? What? And then, <clears throat> sorry, I have something in my throat. Sorry, folks. Um, pastries tend to make you really chubby. The, across the board, the folks I've known that have eaten the most donuts on a regular basis and other kinds of pastries it just makes you fat. Uh, it, more than almost any other kind of food. Um, you can eat a lot of bacon and corn-fed beef and pork and the, the conventional stuff, and and that will contribute, I think, a little bit to being chubbier. But not it's not really that kind of food so much that contributes the most to chubbiness. It's soda and sugar and pastries and stuff. Because most of us don't eat candy in large enough amounts really to have it affect us. But yeah. Also ice cream and things too. Yeah. It's it's ice cream, it's pastries, it's cakes, it's cookies, donuts um, that we got to just have a little bit of, you know. They, they're, they're good. You know, I, I'm in a habit where the easiest habit for me to, to get into, <clears throat> even if it's temporary, is having a little bit of soda or juice. I have to keep getting out of that. I have to not have much of that. Um, but it's the sugar. Sugar contributes probably the most to being chubby, fat, overweight. And then other kinds, you can talk about other kinds. But So what the effect of being so massive and big and chubby is you have a lot less energy. There's a lot more stress on your joints. I've been through that to a very small extent, but I've never been obese. Been a little chubby in the past. I know what that's like. A um, little bit. But um, we're talking about just how much energy you have to do, how much zip you have to get everything done in the day. And it negatively affects that. Um, you could say red meat, to some extent or another, might. It has both a energizing and a, a negative side to it too. But the pastries don't really provide... The, the sugar is, is, you know, fast acting and give you a burst of energy but um it doesn't really you know, it's a different kind of thing it's it's not as substantial right. the second prophet in my church brigham young talked about how there's a big difference between um whole grain breads for instance and just whole grains in general uh, and the 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 cookies and the cakes and the refined breads and things, and he said um, something along the lines of, and I'm probably gonna butcher this quote, but he's like, uh, "I care not for your yeah, basically pastries and refined breads." I care not. I care not for that stuff. But give me a, a piece of uh, I don't know. Basically, it's talking about whole grain bread, and I very much appreciate it. And I'm totally butchering the quote. You guys can look it up, Brigham Young. But he basically was saying, yeah, I mean, like whole grain, whole grains. If you eat them, and you probably shouldn't eat them more than produce, of course. But whole grains, if they are indeed a hundred percent fully grains. Are definitely good for you within reason, right? Um, but they can provide a lot more long, uh, long-term energy, both protein and carbs, and all this refined stuff. He said he cares not for that stuff. It tastes good, but it's kind of like pastries, right? So a lot of us ate a lot of this refined stuff uh, more as part of our staple diets when we were younger in the eighties and things, maybe even nineties, and maybe even now. Who knows? And the you're talking about you're still talking about a fair bit of food regarding refined grains in spaghetti and pasta, 
if it's not if it's not, if it's not the multigrain stuff, it's it's refined, right? And uh, all the breads, the garlic bread, pizza, hamburger buns, it's everywhere, right? It's everywhere. And so if it's a bigger part of your diet, it's like a goodie. But you're eating the goodie a lot. And so that's contributing again to your your gut. And if you cut that stuff out, you'd be amazed how big of a hole that might <laughs> leave in your diet. And so how do you replace that? Well, you replace it with whole grains. And uh, to a certain extent, some people even say no whole grains. I mean, no glutinous grains, no glutinous grains, right? Just rice and potatoes and corn and stuff, organic corn. But, but, and then, you know, all this, you know, a little bit of egg fish, a little bit of more vegetables, you know, nuts and seeds and, and beans and stuff. Um, so junk food just can make you, it depends on the junk food, but it can make you confused, depressed, um, lethargic, just blah feeling. Uh, it doesn't make you evil. It just makes you not quite as effective in what you're doing every day. And it can make you chubbier if it's like, especially that has a lot of sugar. And there's a lot of junk in manufactured foods that we are, we should know about and your body can't use it. So you have to eliminate it. So whenever you buy things that have preservatives, it, your body can't use it. It's not usable. So it has to be excreted. So you need to make sure that you're having some degree of produce and things to flush out that those not so good things. In my case, my mom, when I was younger, she, anyway, my all, mothers are like this, all mothers are like this. They, they might fret about how they did things when they're younger, how they raised their kids. Sure. I'm not a mom. I don't know this. I just, I can say this. This is probably a very mom kind of thing in general, but my mom falls in this category. And I keep telling mom, we had lots of healthy foods. We had, uh, you know, fair amount of seafood, clam chowder. We had a lot of carrots and celery. We had always had vegetables. We always had vegetables at every dinner. You always put carrots and celery in our lunches. And yeah, we had, you know, and we had fruit and we had, um, you know, apples and oranges every day, but, you know, bananas. We had stuff that flushed out whatever was in the Doritos. And he never really gave us Doritos, you know. He gave us, you know, help, you know, stuff that wasn't as preservative laden, right? You, you, my mom never bought Ho-Hos. She never bought Twinkies for us. Never. Uh, it was like a homemade chocolate chip cookie and, like, chips, like Fritos uh, or... or um, Lay's, right, chips with your apple or orange or banana or something like that. A sandwich with, you know, tuna fish or peanut butter and jelly or, you know, or and then something like a treetop apple juice or something. You know, that's how a lot of kids eat still, you know, with sack lunches and with string cheese and, you know. But whatever might have been processed, all that stuff was basically flushed out of the system by the produce. And so, in summary, I know this is going on a bit here, uh, getting back to my dream, and I can talk about other aspects of this dream, but, you know, it's just that, um, yeah, when it comes to, you know, you want to eat foods from Mother Nature, and you want to um, be careful about how much red meat you eat, because it can make you into a monster. <laughs> I don't know. It can make you... It's just, you know, I've even heard some other things that go into the weightlifting thing can make you even more surly. So, like things approaching the drug arena, but anyway, <laughs> things that affect hormones. You know, lots of. So you want to be careful with the red meat. You want to be careful a little bit more. You want to be. So you definitely want to be careful with the red meat. You want to be somewhat careful with the poultry, somewhat as well, and then everything else. Is good to go, except also junk food, right? Junk food is probably the worst stuff overall. And red meat is still okay to have, but just not a ton of it. 
and it's going to make you a little bit grumpier. Maybe. Maybe. Um, and I haven't talked about alcohol or cigarettes or um, drugs or, you know, coffee, tea. Coffee and tea, the caffeine and stuff will make you more grumpy, surly irritable. Some people defend tea. Oh, yeah, I understand that. Coffee's good, the caffeine and tannic acid. Tannic acid is going to eat at your stomach lining. It's going to make your stomach lining look like, you know, be more like leathery, hard leather. It's not going to be good for your stomach lining. And caffeine is always going to make you heart pump faster. It's going to, maybe you think that's good, but it's no, not, not in the long run. Eh, it's not a big deal, not as big of a deal. Chocolate doesn't have as much of it as coffee. Just consider this stuff for what's worth. And certainly, drink alcohol, I don't believe is any good for anybody, ever. Ever, ever. The more of it, the worse. Same thing with smoking. It's just, you know, cough and lung cancer uh, and drugs, goes without saying, are terrible for you. Um, but um, I haven't had hardly anybody I've known who is into a lot of that stuff that were roommates anyway, because most of those guys were members of my church, LDS, or... You know, yeah. You know, I had one roommate who drank whiskey a little bit, but uh, that, <laughs> whatever. You know, I was at Central Washington. Um, but yeah, it's just not good for you. Now, the funny thing, too, is that there are guys that are really big and muscular that just need some more meat. I understand that. Whether they're taller, stronger, bigger. It's The thing is, is that, okay, you know, it'll feed your muscles. I get it. It's complete proteins. It's got a lot of good stuff. It's just the thing is, is that if you're taller, naturally, just just genetically, taller, stronger guys are not going to live as long as shorter, slimmer guys. So as far as longevity, as far as longevity is concerned, the shorter, slimmer guys are going to live longer. The guys that eat less are going to live longer. Yeah, that's the cold truth of it. But it's great to be taller and bigger and stronger. Sure, but it's not going to add to your lifespan necessarily. It can have other positive aspects, influences on your health. But the, the, the tough thing about this is if you're taller, if you're a taller guy, um, you can't do anything about how, how, how tall you are, right? It depends. I'm talking about past a certain point. Past six foot four maybe there are some issues with being really, really tall and not living as long i don't understand them fully um but it it's nice to be shorter that way i don't know you're gonna live longer probably if you are healthy um if you're really muscular all that muscle can help some aspects of your health but it's more body mass it's going to put more of a strain on your heart in a similar but different way than if you're really chubby. If you're really chubby, it's even worse because all that fat's not doing any any good. The muscle's doing you some good, sure, but it's more body mass. And so if your body is, if you're freakishly huge muscularly wise, and you're not really that naturally big boned or not so that big of a guy, it might be a little bit abnormal for you to be that big as far as your muscle mass. And so I can't say that's going to add any years to your your life. However, again, it's going to have some other great qualities. You can lift things. You have more physical power, you know. Especially the muscular endurance is probably more worth it rather than the power. The power is great for lifting things more easily or, you know, or, you know, you can open that can, you know, whatever, the lid better. Sure. And other things that can be very helpful, you know, not just the when you're younger bragging about how strong you are kind of type things. But, um, uh, it's just, it's a different kind of aspect of health than the longevity aspect of health, which I think is the most important aspect of health for everyone, because we want to have good lives. We want to have long lives that don't end prematurely. Anyway, uh, leave me the thoughts and comments below. I'll catch you guys later. Take care. Bye.